Hello everyone, this is Earth Archives. In the age of discovery, the most important commodity was the slave trade, but you know that there are more facts about this black trade that are not mentioned in history textbooks. Let's learn about it together today. Before the show starts, please subscribe, share, and turn on the little bell. This will help us grow faster. Without further ado, the show begins. The Atlantic slave trade constituted one of the worst crimes against humanity in recorded history. Over the course of four centuries, a cruel and thriving economy developed around enslaving and transporting millions of African people across the Atlantic Ocean, known as the Middle Passage. Here are nine lesser-known facts about slave trade. 1. The Atlantic slave trade was the largest oceanic forced migration in history. Let's take a dive into one of the darkest chapters of human history, slave trading. Now, humans have been trading slaves for a hot minute, stretching WAAAY back and crisscrossing all over the globe. But if we're talking scale, the Atlantic slave trade takes the dubious crown, no contest. Picture this, from the not-so-swinging 1500s all the way to the 1860s, around 12.5 million souls, men, women, kids, were forcibly packed onto ships at Africa's beaches like sardines in a can that no one wanted to open. And here's the real kicker. That staggering number doesn't even scratch the surface. It doesn't account for the countless others who never even made it to the seaside, those who lost their lives on the grueling trek from the interior to the coast, or the many who breathed their last waiting for the horrific cruise to know where to begin. It's a grim tally, telling a tale of human greed and suffering on an almost unimaginable scale. 2. Triangle trade is only partially accurate. Strap in for a bit of a history lesson with a twist. Remember how in school they mentioned that slave ships did a bit of a round rob from Europe to Africa to the Americas, then back to Europe? Yeah, turns out, it's not that simple. In reality, these voyages were less about following a neat, triangular route and more about zigzagging across the oceans with a terrible purpose. Imagine this, some trips straight up flipped the script and kicked off in the Americas, jetted over to Africa, then made their way back to the Americas. The route between Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Luanda, Angola. That was the heavy hitter of them all, clocking in more miles in the slave trade's logbook than any other single path. And it wasn't just the big-name European ports getting in on this grim exploitation gig. No sir, US spots like Newport, Rhode Island, and Charleston, South Carolina, were launching their own voyages. They'd sail out, collect their human cargo, and then bring them back to the Americas. 3. Many slave traders were women. Curveball in the saga of the slave trade. When we talk slave traders, the usual suspects are men, right? But plot twist, a not so small army of women were deep in the game, too. Yep, you heard that right. Hundreds of ladies weren't just sideline spectators, they had skin in the game, investing cold hard cash into this dark enterprise, as dug up by the folks over at slavevoyages.org. In places like Britain, France, and the Netherlands, it wasn't unusual for widows to step into their late husband's shoes, taking the reins of their not so ethical investments. And hold on to your hats, because one of the last folks standing in the slave trading ring was none other than an American gal named Mary Watson. In the 1850s and early 1860s, she was running her own show out of New York, dispatching ships like it was nobody's business. 4. Enslaved people fought the slave trade. Let's paint a picture of the Atlantic crossing during the slave trade, but fair warning, it's far from pretty. According to the detectives over at slavevoyages.org, this journey was synonymous with suffering. Picture this, about 15% of the captives didn't even make it across the ocean. That's a staggering number when you think about it. Slave traders. They were on high alert, always. They armored up and clamped down their human cargo in shackles doing everything short of growing eyes on the back of their heads to prevent any form of resistance. But here's where the human spirit shows its strength, the captives fought back. Against all odds, rebellions flared up on roughly 10% of these voyages, mostly when the ships were loitering around or near the African coast. Though these revolts rarely panned out as hoped, don't think for a second they didn't leave their mark. They threw a wrench in the slave traders' gears, forcing them to bulk up security by adding more sailors to the crew which wasn't exactly a line item they had budgeted for. This hike in costs led to fewer voyages setting sail. Scholars have crunched the numbers and reckon these acts of defiance may have spared about a million souls from enduring the horrors of the Middle Passage. 5. Slaves not only fought the slave trade, they helped end it. 
So, you know how books and movies love to spotlight bigwig political leaders, painting him as the superheroes of the anti-slavery movement. Yeah, think Britain's William Wilberforce waving the flag of freedom and all that jazz. And sure, these gents did throw some hefty punches in the fight to shut down the slave trade, but let's not get it twisted. The real MVPs of this story, the enslaved people themselves. That's where the resistance started, folks. Take the French Caribbean colony of Saint-Domingue, for example, a hotspot for slave ships back in the 1700s. In the 1790s, the enslaved people there didn't just sit back and accept their fate. Nope, they kicked off a rebellion against the shackles of slavery and then took it up a notch against French colonial rule. And guess what? They didn't just put up a good fight. They won. By the time 1804 rolled around, they'd handed France and its big boss Napoleon Bonaparte their walking papers, making it crystal clear that slavery was history. And they didn't stop there. They claimed their land back, renaming it Haiti, which is still its name today. So, next time you catch a flick or dive into a book that heralds high-profile abolitionists, tip your hat to them, by all means. But remember, the true backbone of the anti-slavery movement were those who had the most to lose and yet dared to dream of freedom. Their spirit, bravery, and determination. That's the real story. 6. The slave trade continued to flourish, even after countries legally banned it. By the time the late 1700s rolled around, a lot of folks started giving the side eye to the whole slave trade scene. Fast forward to the 1830s, and just about every big player in Europe and the Americas was like, yeah, maybe let's not do this anymore, putting bans on the books either through their own laws or big international pinky promises. But don't go thinking everyone suddenly grew a conscience. Places like Brazil and Spain threw their bans on the table more like, fine, if we must, after a ton of diplomatic arm twisting. And enforcing those bans. Please, they had about as much interest in that as a cat does in a swimming lesson. Why? Because the almighty dollar, or whatever currency you fancy, still ruled. The 1800s turned into a bonanza for the slave trade, making it rain profits more than ever. Traffickers were greasing palms left and right, slipping big fat bribes to keep government officials looking the other way while they went about their nefarious business. And where did most of these poor souls end up? Brazil and Cuba got the lion's share, many of them ferried over under the stars and stripes on ships built by Uncle Sam, with the US more or less turning a blind eye. All told, these bootleg slave ships carted off 1.65 million captives in the 1800s, that's 13% of the entire slave trade market, if you're keeping score, according to the eggheads over at slavevoyages.org. And here's a kicker, the Atlantic didn't see its last slave ship until the late 1860s when one more snuck into Cuba. Just goes to show, just because something's declared, illegal, doesn't mean it's actually out of the picture. 7. The Atlantic slave trade was global. Folks, let's dive into a story that stretches way beyond the mighty Atlantic, spilling into corners of the globe you might not have pegged at first glance. The Atlantic slave trade wasn't just about ships zipping back and forth across the ocean, it was a global shopping spree with a dark purpose. Imagine this, European slave traders weren't just chilling in the Atlantic. Oh no, they were on a worldwide treasure hunt. They'd pop over to South Asia to snag some fancy fabrics, then zip down to the Maldives to scoop up cowrie shells, basically the ancient version of Bitcoin. These items were their trade bait, the currency they used to purchase lives in Africa. But here's where it gets even broader. This wasn't just an Atlantic or even an African thing. Parts of Africa that didn't even touch the Atlantic got wrapped up in this mess. For example, some of those slave ships, which were basically floating nightmares, hauled captives all the way from Mozambique, on Africa's eastern coast, to the Americas. And once in the Americas, the horror story continued, but with a twist. Enslaved people weren't just toiling on plantations, they were digging up metals like silver and gold. And guess what? That treasure sometimes ended up halfway around the world in China. So yeah, the Atlantic slave trade. It was more like a macabre global exchange, a web of exploitation stretching from the Indian Ocean to the Americas and all the way to China. And that's the dark, interconnected world of the slave trade, folks. 8. The slave trade transformed the world. Let's break it down. The slave trade wasn't just a chapter in history books, it was a seismic event that flipped the script on, well, pretty much everything. Picture this, millions of lives uprooted and thrown into chaos. We're talking about a death toll that's stomach churning, between 1 to 2 million souls lost at sea during the horrifying Middle Passage. 
and for the lucky ones who survived. A lifetime of backbreaking labor awaited them in the Americas. But it's not just about the immediate human tragedy. This whole sordid affair went on to cement racial hierarchies that dug their heels deep into the Americas and Europe, sustaining a centuries-long system that kept black people under the boot of oppression. And let's not forget how it cozied up to capitalism, industrialization, and imperialism, giving these systems a steroid boost and lining the pockets of enslavers and their societies on both sides of the pond. And the environment? It got hit hard, too. We're talking about an eco-makeover in the worst possible way. Invasive species like mosquitoes hitched rides from Africa to the Americas, while vast swathes of trees got axed to make room for cash crops like sugar and cotton. This wasn't just farming, it was a total environmental upheaval, all for the sake of global markets craving those goods. But hold up, it wasn't all doom and gloom, because even in the face of unspeakable adversity, African culture refused to be quashed. Enslaved Africans left an indelible imprint on the tapestry of the Americas. Considering the vibrant tapestry of African cultures, it's no shocker. In fact, until the 1820s, more enslaved Africans had crossed the Atlantic than Europeans. Think about that for a sec. Their influence is undeniable, weaving through the fabric of language, music, religion, food, and medicine across the Americas. So, there you have it, a whirlwind tour of the slave trade's impact, stretching from undeniable tragedy to an enduring cultural legacy. 9. Enslaved people have stories to tell. So, history buffs and curious minds, listen up. There's a whole treasure trove of stories and information being unearthed about the folks who endured the unimaginable as captives. Thanks to some serious digital digging, websites like slavevoyages.org and enslaved.org are bringing to light the names and histories of tens of thousands of individuals who were enslaved. Now, let me tell you about a dude whose story is grabbing headlines. Meet Oluale Kosola, but you might know him as Kujo Lewis. This guy's life is straight out of a movie. Back in 1860, he gets nabbed by some Dahomey warriors in what's now Benin, and just like that, he's on his way to Alabama on the Clotilda, yep, the notorious title holder of the last slave ship to hit the US shores. Kosola didn't just survive the harrowing trip known as the Middle Passage, he lived through the unfathomable hardships of slavery in the American South. But here's where it gets really interesting. After all that, he band together with other Clotilda survivors and they carve out a piece of the world for themselves, founding Africatown, Alabama. And guess what? Africatown is still on the map today. Talk about resilience and the power of community, huh? Kosola's story is just one of many, but boy, does it shine a light on the strength and spirit of those who refuse to be defined by their bondage.